All right, let's head to the association because if your team is in need of a point guard, well, this was the off season to get one. Chris Paul was involved in a blockbuster deal after agreeing to send Bradley Beal to the Suns in exchange for a package including Paul. The Wizards then agreed to send CP3 to the Golden State Warriors. Staying in California, Russell Westbrook has decided to stay with the Clippers. He only averaged 15.9 points per game last season, which was his lowest scoring average since his rookie season. Meanwhile, James Harden and the 76ers reportedly exploring a trade. If or when Harden is moved, he would be the third player to average 20 points and 10 assists in a season and start the next season on a new team. Continuing with trades, Dame has reportedly request, requested out of Portland. Last season, Lillard averaged 32.2 points in 2022-23, the most by any player in a season in Trail Blazers history. So, Courtney, I'm going to start with you on that one. Who's most likely to win their first ring? Is it CP3, Russ, Dame, or Harden? Chris Paul doesn't have to carry the load offensively the way he's had to do in every other spot. And this is going to be a new role. It's probably going to take time for him to get comfortable. Manning the second unit when he's so used to starting, that doesn't mean he's not going to start. But you have on the same roster two players, two active players, who currently rank top ten in assist, uh, assist steals and three-point field goals. That's Steph Curry and that is Chris Paul. This is going to be his chance at the later part of his career to finally get that ring that has eluded him for so long, not having to be the person that the team relies upon on a consistent every single game basis when injuries have been the thing that's popped up in the postseason and have limited him from his time with the Clippers to his time with the Suns. And I look at the way that the roster is currently constructed in Golden State. Remember, they were a team that won a championship 12 months ago. Stephen Curry was the MVP of the finals that year. He's still on this team. Curry, Clay, Draymond, and then Chris Paul. Does it get, do, can you find any better depth than that? I don't think that it exists out there in the NBA. And I like his chances of all the players you mentioned because of this newfound role that's going to take the burden off of him and allow him to do what he does best. He's an elite level ball handler and he can create opportunities for everybody else that's going to be on the floor with him. Tim? I'm going to take Dame Lillard because to me this is very simple. Dame Lillard is by far the best player of this group. And when he gets traded, assuming he does, he's going to end up on either the Sixers or the Heat who are going to be considered one of the favorites, if not the favorite, to win the Eastern Conference and maybe be favored to win the championship. The Warriors are a nice team. They're not going to be the favorites in the West. Wherever James Harden winds up, he's not going to be one of the favorites in the West. And you know, Russell Westbrook going to the Clippers, again, like it, he had a nice stretch. play. He played well down the stretch for the Clippers, but – that was a team that was not going to be able to win a championship with the group that they had. So to me, put Dame Lord on Miami. As we talked about earlier, they got the best big three in the league. You put him with Joel Embiid in Philly. I think it's the best duo in the league. And I think either one of those teams is going to be seen as one of the top two or three teams to potentially win the title. That's why Dame for me is the very easy pick. I'm going to go with Damian Lillard as well. Let's just look at the three teams that we've heard the last few days um, when, it, when Dame's name has come up. You talk about the Philadelphia 76ers, you talk about the Miami Heat, you talk about the Boston Celtics, although it would be hard uh, trade-wise uh, for them to get Dame, I, I, I personally feel. But if he went to any one of those three teams, they instantly become the favorite in the Eastern Conference. So I agree a lot with Tim Legler just said. Also, you talk about a guy who is the best player of all the ones we just mentioned, a guy who doesn't mind carrying that load and can be the guy that their team can go to down the stretch when they need a bucket. I also love the versatility of Dame of being able to shoot from deep, being able to still take it to the rack. I like his free throw percentage. I just think he's born with that clutch gene and not many people have it. Um, okay, so nobody chose Harden or Russ. I think, HD, you were supposed to choose Russ. I thought you were choosing Russ. Uh, but we'll just we'll just well, give you that. He, he, okay. Here's the thing. Okay. No, here's the thing about Russ. Uh -huh. Because if the Clippers can stay healthy, if Kawhi Leonard yeah. and Paul George can stay healthy, Russ will be my pick. It's just that okay. I'm not putting my money on them staying healthy. Right, right, right. right. They've, they've not done that in the past. Okay, so nobody chose James Harden. Uh, Tim, why is that? Let's start with you. Well, whether he's on the Sixers, who have lost a couple of death pieces in free agency, and obviously it would be a pretty interesting situation if they're trying to make that work after this trade request, or say he goes to the Clippers, the Clippers will be a good team, but they're not going to be a pick by anybody to win the Western Conference. We've seen James Harden struggle in the playoffs, and as 
uh, Harry just mentioned, you look at the injury issues with Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, and it's very hard for me to say, well, if he goes there, he's going to be the best one of these guys to win a championship. Because, again, whatever team Dame ends up on, he's going to be on a team that's going to be in the top three in, across the league mm -hmm. in terms of expectations to win a championship. You can't say that about any of these other guys. So that was why he wasn't on my list and why Dame was. Game seven still stuck and in, seared into my yeah. brain. I really can't get that one out. The nine-point performance, absolutely no showing after dropping 240 pieces against the Boston Celtics. The playoffs have never been James Harden's thing, and that's okay. I mean, he's a terrific regular season player. The durability factor when he is locked in is something that stands out for him above others on this list. But I just think about his ceiling in the postseason. Wherever he goes, whether he stays with the Philadelphia 76ers, which feels like the, the option that the Philadelphia 76ers want to avoid, or whether he goes to Los Angeles Clippers, He'll be on teams that will be in the second round of the postseason. We've seen that happen, but I don't know if he has enough within his arsenal in the postseason to be able to get past that. That's why when I brought up the big three, if he can be in a core that can compensate for what he lacks in the postseason, because he's known shown a lot. It hasn't just been with the Philadelphia 76ers. It's been at other points throughout his career, and that's that proverbial elephant he can't get off his back. If you can be with a Kawhi Leonard who can lift you in the postseason and make up for some of the things that you can't do, then that's a different story. But James Harden himself, and just kind of looking at what he is in a vacuum no matter where he ends up, we've seen how good he can be in the postseason. And at this point of his career, you're not getting 2018 version of James Harden, that same shooter, that same M previous MVP. You're getting somebody who can facilitate for others, but I think there's a cap on that. Yeah, I just can't get out of get out of my head two years ago versus Miami in games five and six, and then last year in games six and seven. Uh, he went 16 for 49 combined in those four games I just mentioned, averaged 11.7 points per game, and had 18 total turnovers. That's why I didn't choose James Harden. Look, James Harden, if he's your third best player, you feel great about it. But again, if he's going to go to the Clippers, which is the most likely outcome if he's not in Philly, he's playing with two guys who have not been able to consistently stay on the court. If you could guarantee me those three guys are on the court, sure, I'd give them a real chance to get out of the West. But if you, I mean, when you look at the competition they have and the injury questions that would be there with that group, mm -hmm. they'd obviously get a lot better. But I just can't get past the fact that they're going to find something to trip them up because that's just what always happens with the Clippers. It's a tale as old as time. We've been talking about this issue, uh, this situation with James Harden for a very long time. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.